Hello everyone and welcome to this second video on graph theory series. The first series saw the definition for trees, what is meant by spanning tree and minimum weighted spanning tree. In this second video, we will see in detail about Kruskal's algorithm and how to apply it to form the required minimum weighted spanning tree. We will have a recap of the session and we will move on into the topic. What is the purpose of Kruskal's algorithm? It's to find the minimum weighted spanning tree of a given graph G. So you have been given with a graph G. We need to find what is going to be the minimum. So least of the weighted spanning tree. So we will have the preliminary on what is meant by a tree. Tree is going to be a graph that is going to be connected and circuitless. What is meant by a spanning tree? A subgraph of G that contains all the vertices of G and is going to form a tree. So the vertex set of G is retained as such and you construct a tree out of it. This will lead you to the formation of a spanning tree. What do we mean by the minimum spanning tree? If our graph G is going to be a weighted graph, the spanning tree of G with this going to have the smallest of the total weight will be called as the minimum spanning tree. For this construction, I need to keep in mind that a tree with n vertices has n minus 1 edges is going to be the property of concern for me. So a tree, spanning tree, minimum spanning tree and this property of a tree that it has n vertices means n minus 1 edges is going to be considered for the construction of Kruskal algorithm. Let us quickly get into the algorithm. What does the algorithm say? Kruskal's algorithm first says or asks us to the edges of the given graph G is arranged in order of increasing weight. What do you mean by increasing weight from small to big. Why is this so? Because we want a minimum weighted spanning tree. So we will have to begin with the adding of small edges first and then we can build the graph or the give the, build the tree with moving on edge by edge to add the bigger or the uh, edges with more uh, amount of weight. So first what you will have to do is arrange the edges of your given graph G in the order of increasing weight which means from small to big first you arrange them. Then you are going to select one after the other from the set of uh, edges which is going to be available for us. So in step 2 what we do is we add edges one after the other in a way that we are going to create the spanning tree. We will have to keep in mind spanning tree is something that retains the original vertex set of G as such to which we just add edges. So we need to keep in mind we are going to form a tree which means it has to satisfy the property that every tree with n vertices must have n minus 1 edges. So this is going to be one property and the basic definition of tree which guarantees that it is going to be connected and it is going to be circuitless. Circuitless is going to be my second property. Okay, So these two things have to be kept in my mind during the construction process. So in step 3 we make sure that the weights minimum weighted edges which we add one after the other or successively which we get added do not form a circuit with the already existing or already selected edges. So that makes sure that it is becoming circuitless in nature and the process is going to stop the algorithm is going to stop after n minus 1 edges have been selected. So we make sure that the algorithm is going to be executed for n minus 1 times starting with the first second third edge so on. We keep on adding the edges successively making sure that we don't form any circuits with the already added edges and we stop the process after n minus 1 edges have been added. So this are going to be the four steps which we are going to execute it. So if it is going to be smaller graph, we can do it manually. But if the network is going to be a little bigger, then uh, we may not be in a position to find all the spanning trees of the given graph and go for the minimum weight check. So this is going to be a foolproof algorithm which will give us the requirement that is finding the minimum weighted spanning tree. 
next we will apply it to the problem for which we will be making use of a tabular format the tabular format contains h where we are going to arrange them in increasing order their weights which is going to be specified h is going to be the labels and weight is going to be the numbers on them next is the tabular column which contain included in the spanning tree yes or no since we know that we are successively adding the edges one after the other making sure that we are not forming a circuit with the already existing ones so we say that every time an edge is added does it gets into the spanning tree or not so if it is not going to get into the spanning tree why we are going to avoid it this is because we make sure that we don't have any circuits in them so the avoiding no why does it happen if it forms a circuit so in which case what is going to be the circuit form if no then the circuit form so this is going to be the table basic table which we will be using for the construction and which will make the algorithm work very simple for us so let us get on track with the problem let this be the given graph g for which i will have to use my kruskal algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree of this weighted graph now i can see that 1 2 3 4 5 5 there are going to be five vertices for this given graph g so my algorithm has to run for so n which is going to be five vertices so n minus 1 edges is going to be my requirement which means i need four edges and when there are going to be four edges the process will stop so you need to know what is going to be your requirement so first when a problem is given to you count the number of vertices and write and next decide when your algorithm has to stop executing the process so it all will be stopping when you have reached n minus 1 edges so when you have reached to four edges then the graph would have turned out to be a tree and that to a minimum weighted spanning tree because we are going to apply kruskal's algorithm to it so now let me copy paste the edge table with edge weight included in spanning tree s yes or no and if no then the circuit form okay so this is my graph i make sure that increasing order i place it 2 3 4 4 6 6 6 7 8 8 so from this graph make sure that every time you copy paste and uh, edge over here that is being striked off so that you don't make it in a repetitive way one more time you don't add it to the table and this will keep track of it a is 2 yes you have added cd is going to be 3 yes you have added ac is going to be equal to a and c is going to be 4 yes we have added this so this will now leave me with what are going to be the left out edges in case we are um, missing out any edges now this will tell me whether we have already included it or not okay so this is just a shortcut uh, loop to make sure that we are not missing out on things so every time you add an edge strike off that edge so that we are uh, clearly visible with the left out edges so now we are ready with the table the next step is going to be construction for the construction of a spanning tree the requirement is a spanning tree contains the vertex set of your g as such so wherever we have the vertices just make a copy of it so i am just making a copy of the vertex set a b c d and e a b c d and e so a graph is now going to be generated or tree a spanning tree is going to be generated by connecting these vertices over here okay now let us start executing the algorithm step 1 has been executed you need to keep in mind there are five vertices so how many times you will have to run the algorithm for you will have to run it for four number of times so a e equal to 2 a e yes we are going to add this a with that of my e yes this is going to be 2 yes i am adding this because it doesn't form a circuit with already existing one do you add it yes i am adding it next cd is going to be 3 where is my cd this is going to be cd this is going to be equal to 3 yes are you adding it yes i am adding it because it doesn't form a circuit with the existing one next two edges have been added next i will add the third one ac which is going to be equal to 4 so a to c which is going to have the edge weight as 4 is getting added 
does it form any circuit no so i add this one okay next ce is equal to 4 let me add the ce now this ce which is going to be equal to 4 now pay attention over here like uh, when i had this edge ce over here now what do i get uh, notice this I am having a circuit that gets formed but my requirement is going to be a tree which is going to be connected and it has to be circuitless so is it possible for me to have a circuit in a tree no so is it wise to add this edge CE no so this edge CE will not be appearing in my graph so you must now write that are you adding the edge CE? No, you are not adding the edge CE. Why is it so? Because it is going to form a circuit for me. So what is going to be? I have written a no over here. In which case I need to say why? Because it forms a circuit. So what is the circuit form? I can start my circuit anywhere and I will have to end it at the same point. Let me say I begin with A, I go to C, I go to E and I go to A. So this is going to be the circuit that gets formed. Okay, it is not necessary always you will have to begin with A. You can also say E, A, C, E is going to be the circuit that gets formed. Or you can write C, E, A, C is going to be the circuit form c e a c is going to be the circuit form any one of the name is suitable for it so what we make sure is we are not adding this line which is going to be c e for my computational purpose because it forms a circuit okay one two three three edges have been added now let me add the fourth edge a b which is going to be equal to six now this line A to B which is going to be of unit 6. Okay, does it form a circuit with any of the existing ones? No. So yes, I can add this. And now I have required number of edges which is going to help me in the construction as tree. Now you see that everywhere you are going to be connected. And you see that everywhere there is no circuit that is going to exist. So this graph which is being generated will be our minimum weighted spanning tree. Okay, now I have got my 1, 2, 3, 4. Now what to do about the remaining things? Algorithm has already stopped working. So I need not have to bother about these edges if they are going to get inside my graph or not so the process has stopped so you can put a dash and ignore the remaining of the quantities and this is going to be my required quantity the last concluding point over here is not to miss what was our aim to find the minimum weight of the spanning tree so what is going to be the minimum weight over here the minimum weight will be the addition of all the s which we have done over here what are the s which we have done you can take it from this graph also 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 so that makes it as 15 so this is going to be the minimum weight of our spanning tree normally in exam we will be in a hurry we will be filling all this table we will be constructing this graph but this one line we will be missing out in a hurry but this is going to be the most important of all that which will solve our purpose so don't forget to write this line in a hurry so keep track of first arrange the edges by increasing order make an empty dot or fill the vertex set as that of your g make a copy of your vertex set g and then you start adding the edges one after the other making sure that you don't have any circuits this is not the only spanning tree which is available for this graph g now while writing instead of writing ac first if i have written my ce first what will happen this would have been added and this ac which would have formed the circuit would have been missed out for now the order of arrangement is going to be 
in our hands there is no hard and fast rule so if i arrange this a b b c b e which has six 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 in any of the combination b e first or b c first or a b first then accordingly the process will change but finally the end result will be one and the same so we can have multiple copies or different copies of minimum weighted spanning tree with the same weight 15 but there can be different structures that get developed out of it so it is this structure that gets developed is not unique in nature keep in mind so you can have various copies of this also with the same minimum weight that all depends on the order in which you write so make sure you don't miss out any of the edges and make sure you are writing uh, inclusion s and whenever it is going to form a circuit the required circuit form last but not the least don't forget to add all the weights and find out the minimum required weight for it happy learning keep learning we will see if it is possible to include one more example of the same series thank you